Hi, Wackadoodle family. It's Pastor Tim Henderson. I want to share with you what is pressing, what's urgent on my in my spirit this morning, as in the days of Noah and Lot. I'm going to read from a couple uh, verses. First, Matthew 24. And I'm going to start with verse 37. As were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. Two will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord will come. Then in Luke 17, 26 to 30, And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they build. They built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Now we know that there's a difference between the rapture and the second coming when Jesus is revealed to the world, when he comes back. The Battle of Armageddon, his feet land on the Mount of Olives, it splits in two, and he takes his rightful place on David's throne. And he will rule and reign for that millennial period. And those of us who are raptured before that, we come back with him and we will rule and reign with him. Praise God. We're leaving soon. We fly soon. It's boarding time, brothers and sisters. God's about to shut the door. For some, that may be confusing, and I, I apologize for that. You, you'd have to watch more videos and, and get the understanding. The important thing, and I want to talk about it, it will be in the description, the ABCs of salvation. If you admit you're a sinner in need of a Savior and believe on the redemptive work of Christ on the cross of Calvary, always being God, having been born of a virgin, wrapped in flesh, never sinning, and shedding his blood to pay the debt for your sins. You believe in his death, burial, and on the third day he rose from the dead. You call upon the name of the Lord, Romans 10, 13. All who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The nanosecond you believe, you are saved and sealed until the day of redemption. Praise God. We call it the ABCs. It will be in the description. So I want to talk about this urgency because time is of the essence. As in the days of Noah, I have videos on this channel about the Nephilim, about the adulterated seed. I'm not going to go into that now. Wickedness, when you read the account, the, the hearts of man, the wickedness. We are, as you look to the Matthew 24 and 25, the Olivet Discourse, talking really about the tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble, that the bride of Christ is out of here. When you look here at Luke 17, and it's talking about when he's revealed the second coming. We are building up to that point. The rapture is imminent. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 to 18 and 1 Corinthians 15, 50 to 53. You can look them up yourself. There are other rapture verses you can do a search of that. We believe in the pre-tribulation rapture of the church. Uh, should the Lord tarry in the near future, I'll do more detail on that again for those who don't understand it all. The Lord himself shall descend with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God. The dead in Christ shall rise first. The dead in Christ are in his presence, but the grave, because Jesus conquered held death in the grave 2,000 years ago, will not be able to hold even the smallest particle of their bodies. The grave must give it up. And there, what was, immor what was mortal will be made immortal. What was perishable will be made imperishable. And then the Bible says, those of us who are alive will be caught up together with them in the air, and we will be with the Lord forever. 
That's not the point that his feet hits the Mount of Olives or the Battle of Armageddon. We then, we get raptured. I believe we go. We do a stop off at the Bema Seat of Christ. It's not condemning. I don't want to use the word regret, but our works we're not saved by works. We're not kept saved by works, but we are saved for works. Those first works which he created, he ordained for us, will be tested. It's really about the motives and the intent of our heart. I've shared that before. And as my brother Greg Jackson says, that's kind of like the, um, the dress rehearsal before the wedding. And then we go into the bridal chamber for that week during that tribulation period. And we come out and we're with the Lord. We come back with him, praise God, at the Battle of Armageddon. So when we look at the days of Noah and the wickedness, what happened? Noah and his family were on the ark. And the way it was structured and built, God himself closed the door. And then the flood came. And it was too late. It was too late. Let's look, because these are types. Let's look at Lot. The wickedness. It wasn't just about they were marrying and going about their business. They had no... They had no regard for Elohim. They had no regard for the eternally self-existent God and the persons of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The wickedness that pervade the, oh, it was just terrible, just like it is today. And people are going about. What were they doing? They're, look at the world today. I mean, look at the world today. Just a few things. You have the President of the United States tweeting that we should celebrate. Now, I agree with one part of his tweet that these countries that are putting to death people who are of the LGBTQ community, no, I'm not endorsing that we murder people because of their life choices. We pray for them. We love them. We want to share the gospel of grace with everyone. So, no, I'm not for beating up, abusing, torturing, or murdering anybody. No, heavens no. But we will not celebrate and call what is evil good and what is good evil. We will never do that. We're not going to call sin righteousness and righteousness sin. We're not, because of the grace of God, we're not saying go out and sin. We're not saying that. In fact, the nanosecond I believe I'm 100% justified and 100% positionally sanctified because of the blood of the Lamb. All because of Jesus. My past, present, and future sins. Hallelujah. De sin debt can no longer be attributed to me because of 2 Corinthians 5.21. He who knew no sin became sin that I might become the righteousness of God. My sin was imputed to him and his righteousness to me. We live in a day. Look at this pastor in Canada and Toronto. Toronto, David Lynn. They, I mean, they were gathering around him and he gets arrested for preaching the gospel of grace and the love of God because it's Pride Month. And for our president, President Trump, to tweet and celebrate in unity Pride Month, no way, not going to happen. That's not something to be celebrated. So we don't celebrate sin, my sin or anybody else's. Thank God for the blood of Jesus that paid the debt for our sins. When, when we believe, that's what we call the free gift of salvation. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, the free gift of salvation, not by works, lest anyone should boast. And because we have that relationship and we're justified and 100% positionally sanctified, then we want to grow in our in our walk with the Lord in our spiritual growth and maturity. We, our reasonable service is we want to live lives of worship that bring glory and honor to him. But we're not saved by that and we're not kept by that. We were saved the nanosecond we believed. We grow. And so those works, that life of, it's all about Jesus, right? And, and so that's what will be rewarded when we go to the Bema seat rather than burn up like hay, wood, and stubble. And our motives and the intent of our heart is very significant in that. And so, no, we won't celebrate those things. But look what's happening. In our world now, you have babies that are being born with the genomes from the DNA of three adults. You have Countries like China that are using I, 
I forget the complete name of CRISPR Cas9 technology, gene editing. Two years ago, in 2017, I believe it was a lamb was born having been going through gestation in an artificial womb. Did you hear what I said? They're taking the genomes of the DNA from three adults. So now two men and a woman, two women and a man can have a child that is genetically their child. And now we know that they have the technology to create that in artificial wombs. They have the ability to clone. We have cloned animals and I guarantee you there are cloned people. They, Artificial intelligence, so they have the ability to overlay the cortex of our brains with artificial technology. And Elon Musk and other leaders in that field have said by 2026, if you're not a trans, a cyborg, basically, transhuman, you'll be like a house pet. You'll be subhuman. Can you not? There's so many things. There are human-animal hybrids in the United States, pigs with DNA, with the DNA from humans that they're allowing those embryos to gestate for 28 days, probably longer now. It's crazy. It's crazy. They're just a few of the things that are going on. I, I could go on. There's so many. So when you look at what's happening, we are living in a wicked time where man, just like Hasatan himself is aspiring to ascend beyond God. Man is saying we can be immortal. You have the super soldier technology that the race is on. You, there's so many things. Look, look, we even have a branch of the military now that deals with space. Come on, brothers and sisters. Can you not see how the perilous times we're in and how people go on? And you don't hear a lot about this yet. This is being taught in our Ivy League major colleges and universities. Oh, we are in that day. And just like Noah and his family, the ark door was closed, just like Lot and his wife and daughters escaped to the hills and fire and brimstone came down, we are in that time. What? What's imminent what is about to happen i'm going to tell you what's about to happen the same time there are catastrophic events could be it will also be i believe economic in nature and we see the setup for the global crash economically the church the bride of christ the body of christ the ecclesia the called out ones are going that what does the church include everyone jews and gentiles who have admitted their sinners in need of a Savior, believed on the redemptive work of Jesus, of Yeshua, Mashiach, Messiah, on the cross at Calvary, with shedding his precious blood, his death, burial, and rose from the dead on the third day. Those who believe that and call on his name, we are going to be harpazoed, caught up, snatched up, fiercely, quickly, raptured out of here, and then... The Antichrist, this world leader, is going to rise on the scene. I think there's some good candidates for that, but I won't know for sure because the body of Christ is out of here. And let me tell you, Satan is not trying to prevent that. He's going to cheer and applaud because Holy Spirit in us is, we're the restrainers. And once we're gone, part of my language, but I mean this all hell basically is going to break loose. The Antichrist is going to come on the scene. He's going to confirm a covenant, Daniel 9.27, with Israel. It's halfway through that covenant. They're going to realize he's going to turn on them. He's going to march into the third temple and declare himself to be God, the abomination of desolation. It's going to be the tribulation period, but in the beginning, they're, they're going to be deceived. They're it's He's going to come on the scenes. There's wars are going to stop. Those tensions are going to stop. It's going to appear like nirvana, peace. I believe they're going to call it the aliens have come to help us because of all the disasters or we were going to, you know, because of the tensions of war. Look at Iran now. There's imminent threat. Marine General said, Frank McKenzie, just the other day that action from Iran against the U.S. is 
imminent. We, we know the tensions around the world. It, it's just the convergence of all these things. The dominoes are set. Time is of the essence. We are out of here soon, the body of Christ. I mean, we are out of here soon. Look at this. So we, this afternoon, in a little while, it will be Shabbat. It will be Sabbath in Israel. Tomorrow, it will be uh, Shavuot, Pentecost in Israel. And on the same day, on the 9th, when it becomes Pentecost, that week, the 9th through the 14th, is the Pride Week, the LGBTQ in Israel. Now think about what happened in the time of Lot with his daughters. Brothers and sisters, if, if you cannot see the convergence of signs, again, I'm not going to say the day nor hour, but I'm telling you, men may shake their fist at God and say, we'll aspire and we'll ascend, but God is the great I am. He is sovereign. He is the only eternal being, eternally existent in the persons of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The rest of us are everlasting. We were created. And now that now the question is, in the next one one thousand, two people, when I say one one thousand, approximately two people died. In the next 60 seconds, 105 people will die. Where will they spend the rest of eternity? We're not guaranteed our next breath, and we are clearly, as in the days of Noah and Lot, before these events happen, the church the bride of Christ is snatched up out of here. We are not appointed unto wrath. Just like in the flood, Noah and his family escaped and God closed the door. Just like with Lot and his family, they were escorted out. They went to the hills and the fire and brimstone rained down. This is what the Bible is saying. We are in these final moments of the end of days and things are moving quickly. Time is truly of the essence this is like the days of Noah and Lot. Brothers and sisters, please, I beseech you, I implore you, believe on Jesus and share boldly the gospel of grace and the season we are in. And look up for our redemption draws nigh. Know God loves you fiercely and passionately. I love you too. Rejoice, rejoice, and let's occupy and redeem this time. Today is the last day of VBS at our church, and I just have been so blessed by these children and being able to share the gospel of grace with them through Bible accounts and all pointing toward Jesus. Hallelujah. And I'm happy to report to you that children have come to believe on the redemptive work of Christ on the cross of Calvary, having admitted their sinners in need of a Savior, believe on his redemptive work for the remission of all their sins, and have called on the name of the Lord. If you haven't, and that's you, listen, I get criticized. Well, you're not talking about repentance. Repentance is metanoia. It is a change of mind. I'm not trusting in my own works and my own ability. I am trusting completely, putting all my trust, my faith, my security and the redemptive work of Christ on the cross of Calvary. Yes, after I'm saved, as I live a life of worship, of course, when I recognize what I do, I, I tell the Lord I'm sorry and turn from those things. But I'm already saved. I'm already saved and sealed until the day of redemption. There's no way I could possibly, with 70,000 thoughts a day, there are sins of commission. If, if I punch someone in the face or throat punch them, that would be sinful. That would be a committed act, a sin of commission. If, if the Holy Spirit has led me to do something, I fail to do it. That's a sin of omission. But brothers and sisters, praise God, the Jesus became sin that I can become the righteousness of God. My sin was imputed to him, his righteousness imputed to me. Sin can no longer be held against my account. I am 100% positionally, I, I am perfect in position to a holy God because of the blood of the lamb. Now I'm not perfect in performance, but I'm growing in my experiential sanctification because I'm 100% justified and soon, and I mean soon, I get my glorification. Think about it. No more. This body, this, this mortal body is going to be immortal and I will not have a carnal nature, a sin nature. Oh, glory to God. I cannot wait. And yes, I'm excited for my bridegroom to come and I am thankful that I have placed all my trust, my faith in Jesus and his 
redemptive work on the cross of Calvary and called upon his name. If that's you, tell him, call out to him, say, Lord, I admit I'm a Jesus. I admit I'm a sinner in need of a savior. I believe, I believe you shed your precious blood on the cross of Calvary to pay the debt once and for all, all sufficient for all my sins. And I confess that you are Messiah, that you are my Lord. Just call out to him. Talk to him. Just use your own words. Do it. Do it. Tell him, I, I confess <laughs> that I believe you died for my sins, that you were buried, and that you rose from the dead on the third day. Just if the nanosecond you believe, the nanosecond you believe, you are saved and sealed. Hallelujah. Admit your sinner in need of a Savior. Believe on Jesus, the Son of God, and call on his name. Just talk to him. Just talk to him. Now, beyond that, you want to read the Gospel of John. You want to read Ephesians. Just, but the nanosecond you believed, you were saved. You were indwelt by Holy Spirit. I can't stress that enough. As my grandson Peter says, all aboard! <laughs>